federal government expects that the country will earn a total revenue of 10.7 trillion naira in 2022 fiscal year. This formed part of the budget uh, 2022 breakdown of facts and figures as unveiled by the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed. Mrs. Ahmed also revealed that the deficit in the budget will be financed partly by fresh borrowing as well as uh, also partly by uh, proceeds of privatization. Do take a listen. 2022 aggregate federal government expenditure, including government-owned enterprises, project tied loans, is projected to be 17.13 trillion. This is 18% higher than the 2021 budget. The recurrent non-debt spending is estimated to be 16.91 trillion, and this is 40% of the total expenditure and 30% higher than the provision in the 2021 budget. The aggregate capital expenditure is 5.96 trillion. This is 35% of the total expenditure of the budget. Again, this provision is inclusive of capital component of statutory transfers, government-owned enterprises, as well as project-tied loan expenditures. At 3.61 trillion, debt service is 21% of the total expenditure of the 2022 budget. And it is 34% of the projected revenue of the 2022 budget. Provisions to retire maturing bonds to local contractors and suppliers has been made in the budget in the sum of 290.71 billion, and this represents 1.6% uh, of the total expenditure. This provision is in line with federal government's commitment to upset accumulated areas of contractors' obligations dating back over a decade. And uh, joining us now to break it down is Professor Akman April, Professor of Economics at uh, University of Oyo. Uh, great to have you on the program, Professor. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Good morning and uh, Happy New Year. Uh, quite uh, an interesting uh, presentation yesterday. It's been titled the Budget of Economic Growth and Sustainability. What were the key takeaways for you from the uh, breakdown? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, there are several takeaways, uh, but uh, let me say first, I am impressed that for the second time, there's been a timely uh, presentation of the budget, because it's very important, meaning that uh, from January, they will hit the ground running. Uh, previous reviews have not done this at all, so that is a, a plus for this uh, administration. My other takeaway is that uh, the, there has been a, a, a more of transparency in the issue of debt. The minister went in detail to explain the debt situation. Why I'm saying that is because for the first time there has been a, there has been a thorough analysis of the debt situation in relation to the revenue of the economy. Because we've been arguing for years that GDP does not pay debt, revenue pays debt. As she went very far and very deep in analyzing the debt revenue situation and ended up by saying that revenue the, the, the revenue situation remains a big challenge uh, for the economy. And they are going to make all efforts to raise domestic revenue and, uh, and then uh, the deficit to be financed through uh, borrowing. So there's some uh, improved transparency in the, uh, in the debt situation. Second takeaway, which is numbers we have to check, is that uh, the non-oil non revenue has been increasing, which is a plus. Uh, the no oil revenue has been increasing, and this we've argued for years that uh, the, 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 the oil sector only contributes about 10% to GDP. The non oil sector contributes about 90% to GDP. So, if the non oil revenue is increasing, that's also another takeaway uh, 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 as I see it. Uh, the, the other issue that I, I think should be uh, emphasized is that uh, there's now a link, at least based on the minister's presentation, there is now a link where the, 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 budget, the, the budget is now linked to the plan, which is very, very crucial. And I hope that will be sustained, especially the capital components of the plan is now linked to the National Development Plan, and that should be sustained. Uh, the other issue which uh, the minister did not raise, perhaps for your reason, is that uh, the president assented to the bill, but raised a lot of critical issues, which I think the House and the executive should uh, reconcile. The president mentioned the inclusion of several projects by the, by the parliament, 
and the reduction of also several projects that should be addressed uh, because you know we are entering an, an uh, election year even though the house has an oversight function we need to know why they've done those things and uh, and and its implication for for the uh, for the economy another all important right. issue in my view is yes yes go ahead all right prof but you know so the, you can go ahead prof you can go ahead the, i will say that the other the other issue which uh, uh, nothing can be done about it for now is uh, the assumptions you know we still we are still so much uh, uh, dependent on oil uh, for now maybe we have no choice but going forward we have to begin to reduce that dependence uh, the executive branch submitted a bill, submitted the budget with the with the assumption of the, I think, with seven dollars per barrel, and the house added five more dollars to increase revenue. That is a little bit dicey because uh, even the World Bank is projecting the twenty-four dollars per barrel uh, during the year. The the, the oil situation is very, very volatile. We don't know. So the, the 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 more we reduce dependence on oil, the better. And I'm glad that the oil, oil revenue is, uh, according to their, to their own data, is now doing well. It's increasing, and I hope that will be sustained. Uh, okay. My last, uh, not, not, not my last point, is that uh, is a point of growth, but we should be careful because, as we see in the previous two years, the economy has technically exited the recession. Growth has been positive, but poverty is increasing, unemployment is increasing. So we don't want the next two, three, four years a recurrence of what I call jobless growth. Thank you for now. Jobless growth. All right. Uh, Professor, the, the minister did say, you know, uh, we have a, a revenue problem, but some would say it's actually a spending problem. What, what's your take on that? Well, it's a, spend, it's a spending, partially a spending problem, but we can deal with that if we, are, if we want to be uh, honest. Uh, first, the... Uh, there's, there's some areas where we don't really have a choice. The issue of security is very crucial. Given the security situation in the country, of course, uh, we are going to spend more. But it's not just the spending and uh, allocation on those items, but the outcome. Are we monitoring, are we evaluating the outcome of those ex expenditures? We could still cost, cut down on the cost of governance, in my view. So uh, uh, spending is a problem, but they don't really have a choice for now because of the security situation, the human capital uh, situation in the country. You know. In any budget, the devil is in the details. You go to the MDAs and check what is happening. You see that uh, uh, in most areas, we can still cut down on expenditures. All so right. Maybe. And, you know, with, with a budget uh, deficit of about 6.26 uh, trillion naira, you know, the, the plans of uh, funding this is borrowing. And, you know, we also have, you know, the issue with uh, ballooning uh, debt. Uh, how do you uh, see plans for financing? Well, uh, uh, to be honest, the the, uh, the deficit is refinanced by increased domestic uh, uh, revenue mobilization and loans as borrowing. Uh, as I always argue, nothing wrong in borrowing if you are transparent and if you are borrowing to finance capital projects that have long-run multiplier effects. So there is need for transparency in, in borrowing. If you have major infrastructure uh, challenges which you have to deal with, then I don't have the revenue, then you have to borrow. But you have to make sure that you've done your analysis very well so that what you are borrowing to finance, that project will pay its way. Uh, and uh, the data is the, the minister presented, the, 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 the debt situation is not too bad, but it is in a sense challenging because of the, because of the revenue uh, situation in the country. Uh, so you borrow to finance capital projects. You've done your arithmetic very well. You've done your physical studies very well. You don't borrow to spend on recurrent. And I think uh, I'm sure they had handed that to that uh, uh, principle. And then also, where are the, where, where's the money coming from? Is it solely on, from euro bonds or from multilateral uh, uh, institutions? The, the deficit GDP ratio is within the acceptable uh, 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 benchmark approved by the Fiscal uh, Responsibility Act. I think about 4% or 3.9%. So it's okay, but it's just that we need to be, we need to monitor and get reports as to the projects that the loan is financing. All right, another issue is uh, debt service to 
revenue uh, ratio, you know, being the highest in Africa, you know, should we be worried? And how can this be reversed realistically? Definitely, we should be, we should be worried. You have a, a budget of about 17 trillion, I think, and you are using almost 3 trillion to finance, to service your debt, not even the principal. We should be worried. I think the minister raised that issue. We should be worried. How do you resolve that? <laughs> you, 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 you mobilize domestic revenue. Um, one way of doing that is to ensure that your economy is a growing economy. You are creating jobs. When people have jobs, then they will pay tax. You know, when they don't have jobs, they can't pay taxes, or, or, or they can't pay tax. So, uh, so you you now do a mix of your domestic revenue mobilization and some well-planned, uh, uh, efficient external borrowing, perhaps from multilateral institutions where you're going to have concessional rates and long-term uh, payment plans. It's definitely worrisome because uh, when you are using about three trillion of your uh, budget to service just the debt, not the principal, is worrisome. I think the minister herself alluded to that. Uh, and one way of solving that is to ensure that uh, you, you build an economy that is, uh, uh, that is creating jobs. And uh, you see, the economy, there's also a confusion. The economy is not yet that diversified. The GDP is diversified, but not the economy to a large extent. If an economy is diversified and industrialized, then your manufacturing sector will contribute at least 40% to GDP. So you either you export things you, you manufacture in your country, or you add a value. But where your manufacturing over time contributes about 10% or less of GDP, you cannot say your economy is diversified. The GDP, yes, because you have 46 sectors. But the economy has not been, is not yet, in my view, that, 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 that diversified. Once we do that and move towards building the industrial sector, when you are industrialized, when you have a complex economy, then you can mobilize revenue domestically, and also you can earn foreign exchange by exporting non-oil goods and services. That, 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 is, that is how to proceed. And, uh, but don't forget that this is just a one-year uh, 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 plan, but linked to sorry, a one-year budget, but linked to the plan and, and implementing those items aggressively, perhaps as a, a light at the end of the tunnel. All right. And, you know, the federal government in its plan to generate revenue is set to shift our focus from revenue collection to tax compliance, you know, under the Strategic Revenue Growth uh, Initiative, SRGI. Uh, what's your take on this? I definitely agree that uh, there is need to uh, uh, ensure tax compliance. There are so many Nigerians who are not uh, in the tax net. So the, the point is that you, 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 you increase the tax base. So many people can be in the tax net and to comply with the tax uh, 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 regulation. And I think also uh, another important issue about this project is that the finance bill of 2021 is very crucial. And the defined areas where government can generate revenue. For example, they brought back the issue of uh, excise tax, you know, tax to carbonated drinks, which used to be a very major source of uh, government revenue uh, uh, in the past. So I, 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 I don't agree that I need to ensure tax compliance. But again, uh, because a lot of the Indians who, are very, who have the money hide in the informal sector. So there have to be some innovative way of taxing that sector to generate more revenue for, uh, for government. So I, I agree with that aspect of the, of the budget, that there is need to make sure that there is tax compliance and uh, those who can pay tax should pay. But again, don't forget that it's a feedback mechanism. No matter who is paying the tax, companies, individuals, there must be quality service delivery. Right, and, sure. yeah, and talking about the uh, pro, pro health uh, tax there, how would this impact, you know, manufacturers of these drinks? You mean the pro, uh, yeah, 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 well, you see, uh, 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 no question, the, the manufacturer will pass some of that tax to consumers, part of it, there's no question. But again, you bring revenue for government. Uh, I don't know, some of you are too young, but in our younger days, every October 1st, we used to look forward to the fact that uh, the price of soft drinks would increase by some uh, uh, fraction. So it's a good idea. Uh, definitely, they will pass some to the government, but uh, uh, not much can be done. It's a normal, in any economy like ours, you have to enforce the excise tax. Uh, and talking about passing on, you still have a, a taxation on 
uh, digital companies, you know, without physical presence in Nigeria. I take, for instance, the social media uh, uh, brands, you know, uh, that cost will also be passed on, I'm guessing. That cost will be passed on, but it is, it is it, I don't want to mention company, but it is, it is important that those companies that operate digitally will be taxed. And it is, it's done everywhere. Uh, even if they are hiding in the cloud, it will be taxed. Uh, but we should be careful how we go about it so that we don't discourage them from being in, in, in the country. But they should pay tax. Uh, well, how do we uh, find a, a perfect balance for this? <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, I, I'm sure the digital branch must have worked that out. It's difficult. Uh, but uh, if we find a balance, they should engage the uh, civil consultants and assist them. But definitely, you need a balance, I agree. Otherwise, you can be you can create you can create problems for the economy. But definitely, you should pay some form of uh, of uh, of levy. Uh, for being online. And again, you see, you are right, the issue of balancing because a lot of our youths are into the digital space. So you don't want to discourage them from participating in that space. So definitely, we must strike a balance. The idea is to start with a very low rate and then gradually increase the rate and not just eat them with the high rate uh, because Nigeria is not the only destination. Okay. And uh, another issue, uh, President Buhari recently appointed a new chief, of, uh, chief economic advisor, Dr. Uh, Doni Salami. How do you see this move by the president? I don't know. He's a good friend of ours. He's competent. I, but don't forget that he's only a chief economic advisor. He will advise how they will take his advice. Uh, it's a good move. Uh, it's very late than never. Uh, and uh, I hope there will be good coordination between the chief economic advisor, the Minister of Finance, Budget and Planning, and other relevant economic agencies of government, uh, the proper coordination. And uh, so I, uh, I think it's a, it's a good move, and I wish the chief economic advisor the very best, a good friend of ours, uh, but that's really, that really for coordination. It's very late than never. And then, of course, with the PAC, you know, he's also the chairman of the Presidential Economic Advisory uh, Committee or Council. So, uh, it's a good move, and I hope they will listen to the piece of advice that you, you give. You see, the problem with our economy is that uh, we need to properly understand the economy, the structure. While we emphasize growth, we should ensure that growth itself is not development. You must, if you grow at double digit, you must sustain it for about 10, 15 years to have a dent on poverty reduction. That's why you are seeing that even, even when the economy technically existed in recession, in 2016 and 2020, look at the unemployment rate as we are now. It's like 3.3 percent, and yet we are not. We are so, supposedly not in a recession. Uh, so those are things to that I think the government uh, economists will look at. That are ah, you the, the economy has recovered from recession. You are going at 4 percent in the third quarter of uh, last year, but your unemployment is like 3 percent. Your poverty incidence is quite high. Your misery index and the discomfort index are also rising. And so that is where you need that balancing and you need a lot of uh, strategic thinking by government. So one way of doing it is to, in my view, aggressively implement the National Development Plan. And at least if nothing else within that context, fix the power problem. Electricity supply in Nigeria to be fixed. If you fix that and you have power for even 18 hours, a lot of things will pick up and uh, We'll be on the on the on the uh, on the path what I call real recovery, and not just technical recovery. All right, Prof. Uh, just before I let you go, Prof, I want you to look into your crystal ball. Uh, what's your outlook for uh, the Nigerian economy for 2022? Well, the the outlook is clear. If all stakeholders implement what do what they're supposed to do. Uh, uh, let, let me put it this way. If we can address the security situation, even by 75%, then the economy may make some progress. But it's a difficult year, to be honest, because you are entering into the political space. Uh, so politics and economics, uh, which one dominates? Can we strike a balance? So it will be a tough year. I hope that uh, no matter the politics, do the players will ensure that the economy has the, the projects in the plan uh, are taken seriously. Uh, so if we do that, uh, and we can continue on the path of, uh, 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 for example, as I said, 
fixing the essential infrastructure like power, for example, then there'll be hope. See, the point is that we have to win back the confidence of Nigerians. Yes. People have lost trust and okay. confidence in government. So that's the problem. If you can win that, then there is hope for the future. If you can't win the confidence of Nigerians, then we'll just be going through the cycle of, uh, of uh, decline, recovery, and so on and so forth. So All right, my projection is that uh, uh, the, 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 there's always hope once you're alive. All right. There's hope once you're alive. All right, Prof. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Akman Ekpo, Professor of Economics at uh, University of Rio. Thank you for coming on the program. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you very much.